Hi there, Scott here. Welcome to the channel. Dell Optiplex Micro 7010. Uh, we reviewed the small factory form standard and the plus as well last week. So let's go ahead and dive into this 7010 micro. Uh, before we even start, let me tell you that this thing is significantly faster and cooler than I thought it's going to be based on my previous uh, experience with the previous generation. So let's do the unboxing and let's see what we have here. So first of all, standard Dell box. Uh, this machine uh, was purchased uh, through Amazon. So we have a good old trusty wired mouse and keyboard, which we're gonna toss right off the bat. Unfortunately, we had no option to opt out. We're just gonna use a $20 Logitech wireless set, which works great. And uh, if you order this particular machine from Dell, uh, you can get $5 off of your bill if you opt out or you can get a wireless set uh, starting from about $30, $35. We have this little divider in here. We have a power supply. Yep, a 90 watt power supply. I promise we will not cut this in half. We don't need to do that. We did that last week. So if you missed that video, I'm gonna link it right here. And yeah, we know exactly what's inside of this power supply. So yeah, we're not gonna cut in uh, today. Uh, 90 watt power supply, this literally uh, just like a laptop charger. You can use it as a laptop charger as well if you have a Dell with a cylinder type charger. I don't know if we ever going to make it uh, to a USB-C charger uh, in this uh, category for a 7010. I believe maybe the next model should be or will be coming with. This is a good old trusty cylinder type charger, small size. Uh, so yeah, if you have a laptop, uh, it can be utilized for that. We have a regular cable and we have this uh, Optiplex in here uh, in this little baggie. I'm not gonna pull it out. I'm just gonna put this box and move it out of the way. So I have a very ma same machine. I have multiple of these to set up for a client. So let's see what we have uh, outside start with that and then we're gonna uh, open up a cover and then we're gonna do some performance uh, measurements and uh, pro some pros and cons so first of all we have two usb 3.0 at the front we have a power button and we have an audio uh, connector audio out we have a hardwired connection uh, we have a display port and hdmi and we have four usb ports and that's pretty much it as you can see there is no wi-fi antenna well, we could still technically have an internal Wi-Fi antenna, but that's not the case. This is business class. If you don't see a Wi-Fi on a spec sheet when you order this particular computer or any business class machines, that is not a mistake. A lot of people have this uh, uh, assumption, even I would do, that in 2024, every single uh, machine should come with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Look at uh, your oven, look at your washer and dryer, uh, look at your vacuum cleaner. They have all built-in Wi-Fi. How can it be that a five, six, a thousand dollar, fifteen hundred dollar machine has no Wi-Fi built in? So let me tell you that this machine will go out to a medical client. If this machine would have a Wi-Fi, I would either have to remove the card or uh, disable the Wi-Fi in a BIOS completely because it's a security risk. Uh, these machines are gonna be hardwired. Uh, I cannot have uh, the chance that somebody will connect to a rogue Wi-Fi uh, wi or uh, it, the computer just accidentally connects to an open Wi-Fi that could mess up uh, printing and access to local shares and, uh, and it, ha it can happen. So yeah, for, uh, for us, uh, we need a Wi-Fi, we'll order it. If we don't need a Wi-Fi, we shoot for a machine which doesn't have a Wi-Fi, so you don't, we don't have to disable it, we don't have to remove it. So that is what it is. If I would be a consumer, uh, with purchasing something for myself uh, for a home environment yeah i would definitely uh, needed a wi-fi and i would be outrageous that i spend a thousand dollar on a machine and it does not come with the wi-fi but that's just what it is so uh you see this uh single screw in here and uh, just before we do that so uh, we're gonna compare actually uh, the micro uh against the small factory form standard or a plus uh, if we looking at the machine uh, let's just do that uh, looking at the front uh, same exact thing we have two uh, extra usb uh, versus uh, the micro and with a plus uh, same thing except we have a usb c in a front uh, and that's the main difference if we flip these machines to the other side uh, you can see that the micro versus the standard, the same exact thing, same port, same amount of ports, same type of ports with a plus 
we have two different uh, one we have the wi-fi card uh, right here and we also have three native 4k uh, compatible display ports on a standard we have only one and we have an hdmi which is not 4k it's a full hd and assuming the same thing happens on a micro it's a 4k uh, display port and a full hd uh, hdmi and that's it and that's it so so far uh, that would be the biggest difference between the three machines now i had some preconceptions because i'm familiar with a micro i have uh, a few of them in production and uh, if you're looking at i actually have the wi-fi version this was not in a medical office this actually had to have a wi-fi because they were not using a hardwire connection in that uh, area or in that place but um when I compared this Gen 8 equipped, uh, i5 Gen 8 equipped machine against the small factory form with the same Gen i5 processor, uh, the difference between the, uh, the, the, uh, the micro and the small factory form was about 20, 30%, which makes sense because this machine is significantly larger. We have better cooling. We have a larger power supply. We have more space. So there should be less throttling, more performance coming out of this machine. So I always favored the small factory form uh, against these. So I am very surprised when I ran the, all the benchmarks and performance tests, this thing is head to head against the, the larger computer. And uh, obviously there's going to be some cons. So uh, this has a 13 gen i5 processor in it, 16 gigs of RAM, 250 SSD, same exact thing in here. We have the same thing in both machines, except this is a mobile CPU, uh, 13500T, and this is a 13500. And uh, again, we'll see in a charts that this machine is completely head to head against the, the standard. So that being said uh, let's open up and see what we have here so in uh, the standard we have two black screws needs to be pulled out uh, as we talked about before uh, on a plus we have this latch all you have to do is just pull the latch and the top uh, cover just slides off uh, we're not going to do that so that's one of the main difference uh, and uh, so let's in here we have just one let's see this there is a little plastic hook you need to hook this hold this while you pulling uh, the top cover towards to you so once the top cover is off we're gonna see that we have a wi-fi module in here right here which is unoccupied obviously this is a speaker in here uh, we have the solid state drive right here and we have a sera this is an awesome feature i never noticed that the sera is right here available so you can technically grab a drive and just plug it in here obviously we don't have a bracket but if you just slide this in, it just floats above the circuit board. Obviously, there should be uh, a, a blue bracket in here holding this drive in here in one place. And uh, if we would have a Wi-Fi module, we would have the antenna uh, through this hole right here coming out. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Uh, so let me try to take uh, the CPU uh, and a fan off so you can see what we have here. Uh, let me unplug this cord just to make things easy so this is the whole entire cooling this fan is so small so thin that I, I just can't i just can't understand like how can we get pretty much the same performance out of this little thing versus the small factory form so let me just pull this off and i can show you exactly what i'm talking about so this is the fan inside is about this thick just the fan part then the heat skin is also almost twice as tall as this one. So we have this much cooling versus about half of the size against this. This fan is so little, it's pretty much a size of a low, low end graphics card. It's, the fan is not much larger. This would be a laptop fan, technically. Technically what we have here is a laptop without the screen. Uh, and that's what it is. So if you're looking at, we have two slots in here and we have 16 gig. Uh, module in here and we can pop another one in here uh, the standard also only has two uh, memory slots and uh, plus has four there is no gaming in here uh, as we can see on the benchmarks the gaming performance is literally not exist uh, with any of these uh, but uh, the small factory form has an advantage it has uh, pci slots so we can put a single 
uh, slotted video card in here, while the Plus uh, can have a dual slotted card easily, and it's uh, it's more accessible than this. Obviously, this can handle it, but this has a 180 watt power supply. This is a 250. Uh, in here, uh, there's nothing coming off the power supply. There is no uh, six or eight pin uh, for a graphics card, so we cannot put any uh, decent card in it. And I'm shocked. I am completely shocked. Uh, just just how little uh, the selection what we have for low profile video cards without additional power supply uh, connector or requirement. So yeah, there is not a whole lot. In this case, there is no slots in here. We can't really plug anything in. If we need to plug something in, that has to be a USB. So if you need a, a serial port uh, or you need uh, something else, uh, there is no really good options. Like this is a small uh, machine which completely able to handle lightweight applications office applications really nicely but uh, doesn't have any significant graphics uh, graphic performance and there is again there is no also good option to add anything to it unless it's in an external device because uh, the whole uh, setup of the computer uh, is uh, it's just there's no there's no space in here uh, to do anything so again technically this is a laptop pretty much without uh without a, uh, a screen and a keyboard uh, and a touchpad uh, very nice machine again i'm uh if what so what's the plus well the plus is definitely these are usually a hundred hundred and fifty dollar cheaper versus uh the small factory form ones uh, if you just have lightweight applications this is perfectly suitable for that and also this thing is somewhat portable so if you need to uh, move this machine or you don't have a whole lot of uh, uh, desk space available uh, you can do uh, multiple things with this you can mount this uh, I don't know why I'm struggling so much with this uh, so if you don't have a whole lot of space what you can do is you can mount this under your desk it's mountable you can mount this behind the monitor there's a mount for that uh, so this could be completely uh, invisible or you can just keep it on your desk just like that it's technically uh, taking uh, a little bit of space versus a small even for a small factory form which clients like a lot because it's not a bulky tower uh, this can be even sitting on the top of the desk uh, and it's not uh, causing uh, too much issue uh, just to being there uh, super quiet doesn't make really uh, any sound yes when you're pushing it when i run benchmarks the fan can spin up but it's not really uh troubling uh, like it a lot so let's look at uh, the performance and see what we have here so i ran a couple things uh and again when i run the same test the same benchmarks against the small factory form they are head to head uh, there's no 20 30 percent uh, disadvantage uh, against the micro anymore as at least based on my test environment everything stacks up nicely this machine is pretty uh, uh responsive it's you you click it goes and i have a same exact expectation when i'm looking at the optiplex line i am expecting that this machine when i put it out uh, for a client this will last five six eight years without the glitch without too much uh, problem unless the solid states gets full or windows gets somehow corrupted and let's talk about the other thing uh, while this small factory form is more robust uh, I, based on my experience again these are more sensitive for good quality power and a solid power uh, after power outage after a storm i have usually clients are calling that there is an ember light in the front and uh, the machine is not functional they can hit the power button and nothing really happens so i tell them the same thing over and over it's just a scratch no worries uh, you're going to be back up and running in a second all you have to do is unplug the power cord press and hold on the power button for about 10 seconds uh, and then plug the power cord back and don't touch the power button leave it alone same thing with uh, the optiplex uh, if it lost power while it was on it will do a pre-check yeah, as soon as you plug the power back in or a battery backup has been turned back on uh, the machine will turn itself on you're gonna see the the little power light coming on you're gonna hear the fan is running maybe you're gonna see the hard drive blinks once or two or twice and it looks like it's booting but it's not and then it will shut itself down what just happened it just checked all the components before pre-boot and if no issues found then we're gonna everything just gonna be just shut down like it would be a normal shutdown and then you have to hit the power button so 
people are usually hitting the power button right after uh, this uh, soft reset process, uh, but the computer would turn itself off anyway. So, and then they're realizing, oh, this computer is not working because it just shut itself down. So there is a problem. No, just let it do its thing. Wait about a minute once you plug the power back in, hit the power button, it boots up every single time. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of issues, but uh, that's uh, that's the only thing I can think of. And also with the plus, uh, the data technician was here, uh, tried to help me out on this. Uh, as you can see in the other video, what was the real issue? He was mentioning that the most uh, issues what he has to do uh, is not the small uh, factory four machines, but the micro. He said in some case, uh, the 4K uh, display port works fine, but sometimes this HDMI port stops working or no longer functional. I don't know if that's the case. I said like, oh, wow, I just ordered some of these uh, right before uh, you came. So yeah, they are here and we'll see how they perform uh, in a real work environment. Again, uh, looking at all uh, all my benchmarks, all just a general feeling to working in this and installing softwares and uninstalling and going to the browser, doing speed tests, stuff like that. I am very impressed with this machine. Very impressed. I like him a lot. And uh, yeah, so just back to the uh, the previous model. So this is uh, a Generation 8 equipped i3, uh, I, I believe. And uh, as you can see, uh, we have this little bracket uh, for a, for a 2.5 solid state if you need to. Uh, looks like uh, this machine did not come with that. Uh, maybe it's also an option. Uh, in Dell ev and, and anything in business class, it's everything is an option. Nothing comes uh, by default. So as you can see, this would be the Wi-Fi card with a little cable going into this uh, external antenna. Uh, and that's what it is. So yeah, this machine is, is Gen 8 or Gen 9. Works perfectly fine. Uh, it came out of production because it got uh, slow and the hard drive would need it to be replaced. This machine is so affordable. I think it starts around 600 bucks. It's on a sale a lot of times. If you're not planning to run games, if you don't need additional video card, uh, at least a basic or you don't need a third monitor, uh, this would be a perfectly suitable option. Uh, I like them a lot. So before you go, uh, if you're still here, uh, let me tell you about my laptop giveaway. Uh, this is gonna be number three. Uh, I'm not doing the same thing what I did in the first round and when I titled videos as laptop giveaway to boost the channel. Uh, the second one was way more chilled out. Every single video I'm pushing out, uh, there's going to be an extra chance to get in uh, to this laptop giveaway. All you have to do is send me an email to this particular email address in a subject line, put micro and give me a partial uh, shipping address. I just need the house number and a name of the street, no zip code, no town. Uh, no state. I don't need any of that. And I will promise I will never email you, never contact you unless you are the winner of the giveaway. Uh, I need uh, this information only for verification. Make sure nobody can impersonate the real winner. I'm going to send, uh, once you send me a full shipping address, I'm going to send this laptop out. Uh, you uh, shoot an email me back like, hey, Scott, everything's good. No problem. I received it. And that's all it is. And I'm going to destroy any collected information. Uh, so that's how it goes. Thank you so much for your time. See you in the next video. Scott's out.